Oh, that's horrible. In this video, I solve my suspension noise with new adjustable end links, add some flare with a new wrap, and I update my headlights for a complete transformation of my BMW diesel. The sway bar link or the end link attaches from the sway bar up to the strut here. We're gonna take this off with a 16 millimeter socket. Be careful not to scratch my caliper here. All right, so now once you break it free, it's just spinning on the back. So I've got to counter hold it with a wrench. All right, so now I got the wrench locked in there. Now what I'm gonna do is use a 3 8 electric impact here. Okay, got the nut free. We can push the sway bar out of the way and you can see it holds the uh, brake bracket too. We'll have to remember to put that back. Now we're gonna take the bottom nut off. All right, went ahead and raised the car up just to make it a little easier on ourselves. It's easy now, but when we install, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky. I've got a 16 ratcheting wrench on the outside and I'm gonna counter hold it with my 17. Let's pop that off, slide this down, and let's go get the uh, other sway bar link prepared. All right, now that we got our sway bar link out of the car, as you can see, it's a fixed link, meaning that this length, you can never change it. It's, it's th that way forever. And since the car is lowered, it's changed the geometry of the suspension. So we now have to put our adjustable uh, end link on. Now, we're gonna start off by making it the same length as this. And once it's in the car, we'll make our final adjustment. The way that this works is this rod has a left-handed thread on this side and a regular thread on this side. So as you twist it, it'll bring the ends closer in or further out depending on which way you twist. Uh, this actually has right here on this nut is a left handed nut. And then on the uh, end link head, this one right here has an L on it for left handed. So we're gonna put the left hand on the left hand. <laughs> we'll just go ahead and get it started on there. And then we'll do the same thing to this side. So now what we're gonna do is compare it to the one we took off the car. So we wanna line up essentially where this dot is, the center line needs to be the same as down here. Obviously this is longer. So we're gonna twist this. This is actually gonna be a good demonstration for you guys. Let me go ahead and bring these jam nuts inside a little bit. So as I turn this rod, you see it's pushing it out. So now I'm gonna pull it the other way and you'll see this shortening as I twist it in. So now it's shorter. Well, right now it's actually too short. So we need to make it a little longer. We wanna to try to make these, keep these threads even as well because you wanna have as much thread into the head as possible for strength. So you wouldn't wanna have a bunch of thread down here and a little bit over here. You wanna have the same amount. So let's go ahead and wind it out a little bit. That looks pretty good, except we're gonna get this head to face this way. Basically going to mimic. I'd say it looks pretty good. So now we're gonna put our jam nut in here. We're just gonna make it finger tight because we don't want this thing flopping around as we install it. So let's go get it installed. Try to keep this from turning on us. We're gonna just hold that like that. Just get the jam nut tight enough just to keep it from moving around too much. Then the washer and the lock, nylon locking nut. I'm gonna tighten this sucker down. The nut I removed was a 16, but the one they provide you is a 17. Starting to turn, so now we're going to counter hold this. Okay, that's good. Now let's tighten up the top side. All right, let's not forget the bracket. It's got to go on first. Now this is kind of fighting me a little bit, so I got to push down to push the sway bar down. Because remember, the suspension is not loaded right now. That in there. Okay. Get our washer lock nut. Okay, 17 socket, 17 wrench on the back side to counter hold it. All right, just gonna make sure it's snug. 
All right, that feels pretty good. Now that that's tight, we're gonna leave the actual adjusting bar a little loose because what we're gonna do is put the wheels and tires back on. We're gonna lower the car down. We're gonna roll it back and forth to let the suspension settle. And while it's loaded, I'm gonna crawl my butt under the car and we're going to um, find the, we're gonna adjust this until it's not, there isn't really any tension on it because you don't wanna preload the suspension or the sway bar. And then once we find that sweet spot, we'll tighten up our jam nuts, call it a day. All right, we're gonna start by loosening this top nut here, which is a 16 millimeter. Okay, if you guys can see, it just spins. It's a better shot of it when we were doing that up towards the front. I don't think you guys could really see what I was talking about. So we gotta counter hold that. This one, the notch is very close to here, so you gotta have a thin wrench. These thin wrenches are awesome, by the way. If you guys don't have a set of thin wrenches, I highly recommend it. Although, these might not be thin enough. Huh. Uh, so, let's do this. Try to squeeze this in here. Try to create some more room. That's not working. Hmm. Okay, well, time to get some pliers. All right, sometimes you gotta improvise. Good thing we're replacing these things. I'm gonna squeeze this with the pliers. Okay, so if you don't have thin wrenches, <laughs> you just, just grip it with some pliers. That would not be recommended if you were replacing, or if you're gonna reinstall these, because you don't wanna risk damaging the boot. All right, so let's go ahead and pop this out that. Now you can see the tension on the sway bar right here. So as the car makes its turns, this sway bar is going to twist and it's going to try to level the car out. So now we want to take the lower bolt out, which is a 13 millimeter. I'm using a flex head ratcheting wrench. You could, if you had wobble sockets, kind of come through the backside across the top of the knuckle and under the axle to get on it. Um, there we go. All right, we'll start with the bottom nut, or I guess it's not really nut. Let's start with the bottom bolt, I should say. Started by hand. All right, we'll leave that. We'll come back and tighten that one in a minute. Let's go ahead and get this installed. Just like that. Okay, pop the nut on here. Okay, we'll tighten the bottom one. So it says not to tighten it more than 20 foot pounds. Obviously, I don't, I can't fit a torque wrench in there, so just kind of got it, kind of go by feel. But you don't want to over tighten this. You want to make sure you have good articulation. Big words. Yeah, so see how that still moves around there? You don't want it to be loose, but you want to be able to move that around still. Okay, so once the car's down, we're going to adjust this. We're going to move this until we can't really feel the tension anymore. But if you, if you watch and I move this, you can actually see the bar raise and lower. See that? There's going to be a point, like right there, it gets really easy and right there it starts getting really tough well that's kind of what i'm going to feel for once the suspension is loaded but for now we're going to keep it at stock height which is right about there okay simulate my weight since i'm the only one that drives in the car usually all right so this is basically by feel I stuck my GoPro down there, so hopefully you guys will get a good view. But basically, I'm twisting the, I'm basically twisting the rod. I'm gonna take a nap right here. I know it looks like I'm doing nothing, but my right hand is doing all the work. I'm um, twisting the rod back and forth. I can feel tension when I turn it one side. I turn it and it gets really loose, and then I feel tension again. So basically, what I'm doing is trying to find that sweet spot right in the middle where there isn't any tension, right here, like that. I don't know if you can hear it. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm adjusting that center rod, no tension. So now what I'm gonna do is tighten up the jam nuts. 
again, I'm doing this blind. And it's weird because one of them is threaded backwards. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my wrench and tighten, tighten up the jam nuts. Okay, I got that bottom one tight. Now, this would be a lot easier if I just drove it on my alignment rack. But then I'd have to move like six cars out of the way. I'm not sure I want to do that. Okay, I think we're just about there. Okay, so that one should be tight, loaded. Okay, good. So now what I'm doing is I'm rotating the whole rod to make sure I get that the uh, I have really good articulation because but but you don't want any vertical play yeah it feels good okay do the same thing to the other side and then we'll do the rears okay so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm loosening up the uh, jam nuts to give myself room to uh, adjust this the uh, link itself center link and it's already pretty tight in one direction there we go a little loose and it starts to get tight again so let's go back the other direction oh, it's hard to spin by hand let's see if i can get my stubby 19 wrench in there I'm trying to find that sweet spot Getting close. Yeah, right there is pretty good. If I go in either direction, it starts to get tight. So right here in the middle. Okay, so now we're gonna spin up these jam nuts and then give them a final tighten. Like if I really wanted to fine tune this thing, I would get scales, which means I would put each corner of the wheel so each corner of the car would be on some scales and we would weigh the corners of the car and we would do a final adjustment based on the weight of the car. You wanna have even weight distribution. Um, I don't have scales, but I'm kind of thinking maybe I should get some scales because I wouldn't mind doing this. And I think it would be a good video for you guys if you would like to see me do a uh, corner balancing of the car, let me know. If you do want me to do some corner balancing on a car, what is it you'd like to see about it in particular? Okay, the GoPro is actually in my way. So what I'm going to do is just tighten up these jam nuts where we're going to be done. I don't think you guys need to see the rest of the video. I'm sorry, but I got to move it out of the way. Maybe you guys can see it from this angle, like right here. Okay, I think we're there. Okay. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, it feels really good. Noise is gone. I'm not driving on high speeds or anything, but in the uh, parking lot, feels good. Suspension feels tight. No more clunkety clunkety I'm feeling under the car. I'd say uh, so far, I like it. Now that the car is running great, it's time for an extreme cosmetic makeover that I have never tried before. Starting with the headlights. They're a little old and dingy, and I want to update them. And Bay Optics does just that. So that's why I got to remove the headlights, send them to Bay Optics, and they're going to completely update them and wait till you see how they turn out. As you can see, removing the headlights from this BMW is a little bit more work than your traditional vehicle. The goal for this car is to make it a marketing vehicle where I can promote my shop and my YouTube channel, take it to car shows and events. While I'm waiting on the headlights, this this is a perfect opportunity to send the car to Sage Auto Studios where they're going to be installing my custom livery. I am so excited to see this car when it's done. 
Check that out. That is so good. It turned out way better than I ever expected. This is just incredible. It's all coming together now. The headlights are here. We're getting them installed. I can't wait to show you all the cool features that these headlights can do. These headlights are totally customizable and I'm gonna show you how it's done. Think of these headlights as two separate systems. You have Angel Eyes and Devil Eyes. This is the Devil Eyes app called Magic Light. And with this app, you can choose the color that you want. My personal color of choice is red. It just makes the car look really mean and I'm a nice guy, so you know, it offsets my personality. At the bottom of the screen, you can choose whatever you want, like green, purple, blue. And if you wanted to customize a color, you just roll your finger around the color wheel here until you find the one that you like. You could also put on a show with your lights. So they have these predetermined and settings. The one all the way down at the bottom here is seven color changing. That's my favorite. You could also slow it down or you can speed it up depending on how fast you want it to go through those seven colors. You can also have them gradually fade in from one color to the next, which is really cool too. With this app, you can get totally technical and get into some really crazy customizing stuff. But for now, we're just going to stick with the basics. Let's talk about the angel eyes. The angel eyes are run on a separate app called Blue Ghost. These angel eyes are way more customizable than the devil eyes. Let me show you. This app comes preloaded with tons of light features. This is just a few of my favorites. And then you can customize the ones that they give you. Like this one is waves. From here, I can adjust the waves. I can make them faster. I can dim them down if I think they're too bright, but I'll brighten them back up, of course. I can change the frequency. You can totally personalize this to however you want it. This is a really cool feature that we use at our car shows. So you can select up to eight different light features or light shows you want to call them and then you can adjust how long you want each one to play for so in this example we're going to use five seconds it'll play each show for five seconds starting with number one popcorn and then it moves on to red which is our solid color you could pick whatever solid color you want of course all these are customizable then it moves on to waves and so on and so on i'll tell you what this gets so much attention at our marketing shows even more attention than the exotic cars that come you also have the option to name them if you see number six that says skylar's favorite skylar's my daughter she absolutely loves that one. I'm going to show that to you right now. And then if you want to know my favorite, it's the very last one called Tetris. That one's really cool. It was one of my favorite games growing up. If you've ever played Tetris, you'll totally get this. So basically the pixels collect until they're completely full and then it changes to a new color. So I change the frequency all the way down. And you can see how small those pixels are. That gives me the most realistic gameplay of Tetris ever. So they fill up and then it changes to a new color. Like how cool is that? I know what you guys are wondering. Can you drive down the road with these crazy lights doing their shows? Well, they don't want you to, but technically, yeah, you can. Moving on to turn signals or indicators or blinkers, whatever you call them. Joey, my assistant, is turning on my left turn signal. I know we're BMW guys and I know we don't use them, but if you do, this might be a good reason to do so. You can go in and play with these, adjust them. They have presets. See all the ones here? You can do like a wave, a bounce, a sequence. They have many different options. I love playing around with this and just trying to see which one works the best. My personal favorite and what I have it set to is this sequence. And I have the speed just, you know, it's not too fast, not too slow, but it's just enough. And I think this is the perfect indicator turn signal blinker. <laughs> As you can see with these lights in the combination of these two apps, you can do just about anything you want. Check the description for products used in this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.